flamenco artists. My name is Julia Chacon, or Julia Chacon, or Julie Chacon, and I've been dancing flamenco professionally for 23 years. I wanted to pursue flamenco professionally because it sparked a light inside me that I could not ignore. It made me feel totally like myself and inspired and fulfilled and hungry and driven and excited. It inspired me in a way that I, I wanted to follow as long and as far as it would take me. I started when I was three years old in ballet, and I did ballet from age three to 18. I started on a serious ballet track in junior high, and at that point, you have to kind of take other art forms to diversify. And I had grown up spending time in Northern New Mexico with my family, and sometimes we would stop and see Maria Benitez in the summer. And I loved her company, and I loved all of her dancers and thought they were amazing. So when I had to diversify, I took Spanish dance. I started with Lydia Torea, who was a fabulous, fabulous dancer. She's no longer teaching, but she's still my mentor. She danced at the Coral de la Moreria in the 1960s and toured with Jose Greco and was his partner also in the 1960s. She's a beautiful flamenco and classical Spanish dancer. Uh, I took more Spanish classical. She taught more Spanish classical, which dovetailed really well with the ballet. After graduating from high school, I wasn't really, I wasn't that great at ballet, so I didn't audition for companies, but I went to university and I got a scholarship to the University of New Mexico. I took a modern class and a flamenco class with Eva and Senia Sandoval, and her class totally was the hardest class I've ever taken in my life at that point. I fell in love with it and was offered a flamenco scholarship. Well, not a flamenco scholarship. I was offered a dance scholarship after my first semester, which I accepted and ended up with a degree in my BFA in dance and my BS in anthropology. At the University of New Mexico, I was fortunate to attend Festival Flamenco every year where I got to study with artists from Spain as well as the United States. It was there that I first saw uh, American artists like La Tania, Susana de Palma, Yalisa, and realized that there were amazing artists all over the US. I also got to study with Manolete, the Farruko family, La Yerba Buena, Antonio Canales, Belen Maya, countless others. It was just amazing. I could go on and on. But um, so working with them was deeply inspiring and my time at UNM was hugely influential. I, while I was at university, I went on exchange to Boston and I got to work with Omaira Amaya and dance in her company, which was also very, very influential in my formative years. I returned to New Mexico and I auditioned for Maria Benitez and I joined her second company my senior year. Um, however, I didn't get to work with her very much because I was also cast in a piece that was going to be performed at the festival that was bringing artists from Spain, but was also using five local dancers to fill in the company. And that piece was called Federico. It was about Federico Garcia Lorca, and it was commissioned by Carlota Santana. And the dancers in the piece and choreographers were Miguel Angel Rojas and Carlos Rodriguez. And I got to make friends during that show and had a great opportunity that was uh, a fabulous, fabulous experience. Um, and that was given to me by Carlota very early on. After the performance, Carlota came up to me and gave me her card and she said, if you're ever in New York, look me up. And we stayed in touch and emailed over the years. But it was many years before I worked with her again. After college, I got a position at a performing arts high school in Scottsdale. Lydia Torea was retiring and she offered me her position, so I accepted. So I taught for a year and while I was teaching at the school, I was also gigging three nights a week on Thursday, Friday, Saturday and teaching um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday evening. So I worked really hard and saved a boatload of money and went to Spain. I was back and forth to Spain 
for about two and a half years. I had been working a lot with Ciro at Amor de Dios and he had put in you know, some good words to Maria Benitez. So I got a phone call from her and she asked me to join her company. So that was my first three month contract. And then I worked with Maria for about four years. Um, then I got a call from Carlota asking if I wanted to do some arts education work. So I had actually just completed a couple of arts education programs of my own in New Mexico, working in small towns outside of Santa Fe, as well as schools within Santa Fe. So I was interested in that. And I started working with Carlota in her arts education work. After doing that for a couple of, I think it was a fall and a spring, she asked if I was interested in, in working with her touring company, and I was, so I started touring with her. And I toured with Carlota for, I think, six or seven seasons, six or seven years. After that, I, while I was touring with Carlota, I was also uh, founding my own troupe in Santa Fe. So we were doing gigs around town, and of course I was teaching when I would go home. And my troupe started getting a little bit more attention. I got a gig in Georgia and some gigs in Mexico and also in Arizona. So that was going well, but I decided I needed to go back to Spain. So I went back to Spain, but this time to Sevilla. Spent a lot of time in Sevilla. Worked with Jose Galvan there and got to perform in various tablaos. Um, and... Uh, then when I came back, I relocated back to Arizona, my hometown, to be close to my mom. And I, once I came back to Arizona, I started working with performing arts organizations. I started with Peoria Center for the Performing Arts, where I produced three concerts. And then I started working with Scottsdale Center for the Performing Arts. And now I am on my fourth year on the season programming of Scottsdale Center for the Performing Arts. And I teach here in the Valley in private studios, uh, private sector studios. I've done a great deal of arts education work here. And I'm currently teaching flamenco at Arizona State University where I am pursuing my master's degree. I have had a lot of lessons along the way, and most of them don't deal directly with dancing. The first one I would say is that every gig that you lose is an opportunity for growth and development and big strides forward. And another lesson that I learned that I learned along the way is that my community is my greatest asset. The artists that I work with the people who come to my shows, who attend my classes, who love flamenco, those are the greatest asset that you have. There's a reciprocal relationship of what you give to them and what they give to you and honoring that reciprocity and realizing the significance and importance of your community is a huge lesson. It depends on where you are in your path. Uh, everyone's in a different place and coming to it from, from a different um, perspective. So I would say everyone's going to tell you to work hard. You already know that. Work hard. Um, but if you love flamenco and it's what you want to do, then that shouldn't be difficult because it will light that same light inside you that it lit in me. And so the working hard part is a given. Um, being a professional dancer or director is a, a lot of work. Um, but if you love it, it doesn't feel like work. It feels like your purpose and, um, but it's also not a ton of money and not a ton of security. So you have to be, you have to know that you just have to know that. So if you're starting out and you're early on this path, everyone's going to tell you to go to Spain, of course, and Sevilla and Madrid are kind of the main places to go. I was advised to go to Madrid first to get my chops up and um, that was really good advice because I went to Amor de Dios. Spanish is my second language so it was easier for me to acclimate only having to go to one place and I could get used to what it was like being in a different country and working with people from all over the world.
but eventually Andalusia is where I found my sense of family and really my sense of place in going to Spain. When you do go to Spain, I have some advice for you. I advise you to always watch a class before attending it. And the reason I do that is most teachers will let you watch for five or 10 minutes. And I like to look at how the teacher is interacting with their students, see if that has a vibe that you connect with. I've had the experience where there are dancers who I admire so much how they perform, but their class didn't um, feed me the way that I thought it would. So watching the class has been a huge, hugely valuable um, practice for me. If I go to observe a class and I can't keep my feet still and I just want to like jump in and dance, then I know that it's a class I'm really going to enjoy. If you're in a company and you're working in a core and you're working with other dancers, you have to learn the different roles that you have to play, whether you are a company dancer or a soloist or a teaching artist or a rehearsal director or artistic director. They all have different roles. Sort of learning the ropes of those roles can sometimes take some time. So the more patience and the more kindness you can approach all of that with, the more success you'll have with both your dancers, your musicians, and the people that are directing you as a dancer. Another lesson, another um, piece of advice is uh, don't talk trash. I've heard the worst thing said about compañeros behind their back in companies, and it's just no fun. Um, it doesn't do anything but cause bad energy. So don't don't talk trash. Another thing in working with company is always stay with the person who you can see on stage. This pandemic has been a real challenge for me, not only because of the, the physical distancing and being away from my community, but also because in June I fell and I had a horrible accident and I, I tore two ligaments in my ankle and I had to have surgery to restore functionality to my ankle, which was like a serious bummer. So my students have been a huge inspiration to me during the pandemic and giving classes on Zoom and connecting with people in that way has just been tremendous. So um, my students have kept me going and recovering from surgery has kept me going. And lots of yoga. Flamenco is important to me because other than my family and my relationships, flamenco has been the center of my world. It has been what has gotten me through so many challenging times. It has been my best friend, my therapy, my refuge, my um, prayer, my way of expressing joy. Flamenco has been my best friend and the, the way that I can relate to myself and the way that I can relate to the world. And so that's why it's important to me. And I think that it's important to the world because flamenco for me is the art in which community is best and most strongly expressed. The energy between the dancer, the guitarist, and the singer is all about connection. And that connection cannot happen without all the players. So that sense of exactitude of having each other's back artistically and musically is representative to me of community and connection and friendship and um, all of the beautiful things that happen in the world outside of art. So that representation that is on stage plants seeds of awareness for that sensitivity and that sense of listening and exchange that has to happen in flamenco. And I believe that flamenco plants seeds of that and that those seeds grow the more that people see and experience flamenco with people that really connect and have, have love on stage. Um, that's why flamenco is important to the world for me. Before I say goodbye, I would just like to say thank you to Carlota because Carlota, you gave me so many opportunities and your believing in me really helped me to believe in myself. So thank you for all of the work and for all of the inspiration and all of the wonderful people who I came into contact with through my work with you. 
you are a part of what has built my community and I am so grateful to you for all of the the wonderful opportunities and experiences that that you gave to me so thank you everyone for listening if you hung in there um it was great to to have this opportunity thank you for inviting me to do this it's really an honor to share a little bit about myself with all of you so um Sigue tus sueños and uh, nos vemos.